Ever since mankind has walked the earth, he has doubtless looked to the stars. Gradually, our forebears came to realize those twinkling pricks of light were visual evidence of other stellar bodies, and that there must be a myriad of other planets out there just waiting to be explored. And now, in the 21st century, we finally have the technology to begin expanding our horizons. Millions of miles away, on the surface of Mars, the rover Perseverance is even now on a fact-finding mission, and its latest discovery could have truly revolutionary implications. Scientists analyzed rocks collected by NASA rover and uncovered astonishing new information. Since leaving Earth in July 2020, Perseverance has been at the forefront of space exploration, going boldly where no one has gone before well, no man or woman, at the very least. And in the months since landing on the Martian surface, the rover has been collecting invaluable data about its new environment. But, like Curiosity before it, this NASA robot is on a very particular mission. Years ago, Perseverance's predecessor discovered that the Martian atmosphere was once capable of supporting organic life. And since then, there has been one burning question. Did alien creatures once thrive on the red planet? Now, NASA's latest rover has set out to find the answers with some amazing results. In September 2021, NASA announced an incredible milestone. Perseverance had managed to collect Martian rock samples for the first time. Retrieved from deep within the Jezero crater, they promised a never-before-seen glimpse into the history of the red planet. And already, they are revealing some jaw-dropping secrets about the possibility of life on Mars. According to historians, humans have been observing Mars since at least the second millennium BC. But it wasn't until the 17th century that astronomers, beginning with Galileo Galilei, began closely observing the red planet. The more they learned, though, the more questions they had, such as. Was there biological life on this alien world? For hundreds of years, curious observers could do little more than study the surface of Mars from afar. But then, in the 1960s, all that changed. Nine years before man would land on the moon, the Soviet space program began sending out probes to learn more about the red planet. Not wanting to be left behind in what was soon dubbed the space race, NASA rapidly turned its attention to Mars. And on November 28, 1964, the agency launched Mariner 4, a spacecraft designed to take a closer look at our nearest neighboring planet. Eight months later, it became the first probe to perform a successful flyby, leaving its Soviet counterparts in the dust. Later, on November 14, 1971, Mariner 9 achieved another record for NASA, becoming the first probe to enter orbit around Mars or any other planet, for that matter. But by that point, the Soviets were back in the game. And less than two weeks later, their Mars 2 lander became the first man-made object to touch down on Martian soil. Four years later, NASA launched Viking Ion 2 to Mars, two dual-purpose crafts. On top of serving as orbiters designed to photograph the planet from a distance, each was equipped with a lander to explore the surface. Together, they gathered vital information about the Martian atmosphere and relayed it back to Earth. But Mars is a tough and unforgiving planet, presenting a stiff challenge to all who try to approach it. Proof of this comes from the fact that for the next 20 years, no mission, neither American nor Soviet, was successful. In fact, every attempt to reach the Red Planet ended in failure until 1997, when NASA's Mars Global Surveyor successfully made it into Martian orbit. Up until that point, the only data from Mars had come from orbiting crafts. But in 1997, the Pathfinder craft touched down, bringing the first rover to the Red Planet. Dubbed Sojourner, it was capable of navigating the alien landscape and making observations as it went. Over the course of 95 days, Sojourner traveled some 330 feet across the surface of Mars before losing contact with Earth. And in that time, it transmitted over 550 pictures of the Martian terrain. But there was much more to come. Six years later, NASA launched Spirit and Opportunity, two rovers designed to explore opposite sides of the alien planet. This time, both rovers far exceeded the limits of their intended missions, traversing Mars for a combined total of 21 years. Opportunity, in particular, was so successful that it covered almost 30 miles of territory, 
before eventually giving up the ghost during a dust storm in 2018. But it was Curiosity, launched in November 2011, that really captured the public's imagination. On the surface, Curiosity's job was simple. To determine whether or not the atmosphere of Mars might once have been conducive to life. Landing in the planet's Gale Crater in August 2012, it deployed numerous instruments to measure conditions on the Red Planet. And what it found would send ripples through the scientific community. In March 2013, NASA announced that Curiosity had uncovered something incredible. In a sample taken from the planet's rock, scientists identified some of the chemical elements necessary for biological life. In other words, while they hadn't exactly found alien organisms, they had proved that Mars had the right conditions for them to potentially thrive. Currently, Curiosity is still traversing the Martian landscape, analyzing the atmosphere and sending information back to scientists on Earth. But it's not alone. On July 30, 2020, NASA sent another rover, Perseverance, to join the party. And like its predecessor, it has been tasked with unraveling the mystery of possible alien life. Given the success of Curiosity, NASA scientists knew that there was no need to go back to the drawing board when it came to Perseverance. An evolution of the previous design, the most recent rover features the same body shape, a robotic arm, and six wheels, as well as cameras and a drill for collecting samples. But the instruments on board aren't designed to look for habitable conditions, they're designed to search for life itself. On February 18, 2021, the rover landed safely on Mars, thanks in part to new navigation technology developed in NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Using the rover's 23 cameras, the moment was captured in more detail than ever before. In an official statement, the agency's Steve Jurchik said, Perseverance is just getting started and already has provided some of the most iconic visuals in space exploration history. But that was just the beginning of what Perseverance would deliver. Landing in Mars Juzero Crater, the rover began to explore the ancient lake bed, identified by NASA as a prime location for potential alien life. There, it used its drill and robotic arm to collect samples from the Martian terrain. In August 2021 it looked as if Perseverance was about to succeed in collecting its first samples of Martian rock. But although the location looked promising, the operation was a failure, leaving the rover clutching an empty tube. Undaunted, NASA experts honed in on a new location a rock dubbed Rochette. This time, Perseverance was successful in its endeavors. In a statement dated September 10, 2021, NASA announced that the rover had secured two samples, nicknamed Montanier and Montagnac. And before long, scientists back on Earth were analyzing the rocks and coming to some staggering conclusions about life on Mars. Of course, researchers have long known that Juzero Crater was once filled with water, one of the prerequisites for life as we know it. But what they didn't know was how long it had been there. According to the statement, the lake might have been merely a flash in the pan filling up the depression and then drying out in a relatively short period of time. If this was the case, scientists knew, evidence of a lake in Juzero Crater was not necessarily a sign of a habitable environment. Looking at Perseverance's samples, though, they realized that the rocks had been in contact with water over a sustained period. In the statement, the California Institute of Technology's Ken Farley explained the excitement at NASA. It looks like our rocks reveal a potentially habitable sustained environment, Farley said. It's a big deal that the water was there a long time. But was this liquid part of the lake that once filled Juzero Crater? Or did it pass through the rocks at a later date? At the moment, researchers are unsure, but they are increasingly confident that it was present for long enough to have provided the right environment for life. And that's not all. According to the statement, the samples were found to be composed of basalt possibly formed from lava that once flowed across the Martian terrain. And within them are minerals that will allow scientists to date the rock using radiocarbon techniques. In other words, their very structure could help us to unravel their story through time. The volcanic origin of the rock could help scientists accurately date when it formed the statement read. Each sample can serve as part of a larger chronological puzzle, put them in the right order, and scientists have a timeline of the most important events in the crater's history. 
Some of those events include the formation of Jezero Crater, the emergence and disappearance of Jezero's lake, and changes to the planet's climate in the ancient past. More exciting still, researchers have also detected the presence of salts within the samples collected by Perseverance. According to NASA, these could have formed in one of two ways. Either they were created by passing groundwater which altered the existing minerals, or they were left behind when liquid evaporated from the rocks. The salt minerals in these first two rock cores may also have trapped tiny bubbles of ancient Martian water the statement read. If present, they could serve as microscopic time capsules, offering clues about the ancient climate and habitability of Mars. Additionally, the statement continued, salt minerals are also well known on Earth for their ability to preserve ancient signs of life. Perhaps one of the most interesting parts of this particular mission, though, is that Perseverance has been programmed to help bring the samples back to Earth. Currently, analysis of Mars rock has been limited to what can be performed by rovers and other craft on the Red Planet itself. But soon, all that could change. Historically, experts have dubbed such activity a Mars sample return mission, and it's believed it would represent one of the most important milestones in space exploration. After all, analysis in Earth-based laboratories could yield all manner of revelations about the Martian atmosphere. And, in turn, this information might well help us lay the groundwork for a manned mission to Mars. So when exactly can we expect the samples taken by Perseverance to arrive on Earth? Well, it won't be for a while yet. According to a November 2020 statement by NASA, the organization will be teaming up with the European Space Agency, or ESA, to retrieve the artifacts. And it's not expected to have built a craft that could travel to Mars and then return to our planet until some time in the 2030s. The next step, the statement explained, is for Perseverance to deposit the samples on the surface of Mars, where they will be collected by an ESA rover. Then, the slivers of alien rock will be delivered to NASA's planned Mars Ascent Vehicle and launched into orbit around the Red Planet. Finally, the proposed ESA Earth Return Orbiter will collect the artifacts and transport them back to Earth. Ultimately, I believe this sample return will be well worth the effort and help us answer key astrobiology questions about the Red Planet, bringing us one step closer to our eventual goal of sending humans to Mars," NASA's Thomas Zerbichin explained in the statement. And he's not the only one to think so. These samples have high value for future laboratory analysis on Earth, NASA's Mitch Schulte said in the September 2021 statement, released after the successful collection of the rock samples. One day, we may be able to work out the sequence and timing of the environmental conditions that this rock's minerals represent. This will help answer the big picture science question of the history and stability of liquid water on Mars. For the moment, though, all this is speculation, as scientists wait with bated breath to see if the samples can be safely returned to Earth. Meanwhile, Perseverance continues to traverse the surface of Mars, looking for more raw material to add to its samples. By the time that ESA's Earth Return Orbiter departs the Red Planet, researchers hope that it will be brimming with rock slivers from across the Martian terrain. On September 11, 2021, Perseverance departed Jezero Crater and traveled some 570 feet along a region known as Archibi Ridge. A rocky area on the border of South Ceta, it is thought to form the boundary between two areas with different geological histories. After taking photos of this interesting terrain, the rover dipped downwards in search of more samples. Having previously identified an optimum site for drilling, the team navigated Perseverance towards an outcrop dubbed Boztide. According to a NASA statement dated September 21, the rock could be sedimentary in nature, carried to its current location by the water that once filled Juzero Crater. But as before, closer inspection will be needed in order to unravel the whole story. Before the rover can extract samples from Boztide, though, NASA has to contend with another challenge. The Mars-Solar Conjunction. During this period, Earth and the Red Planet are on opposite sides of the Sun, meaning that radio transmissions between them can be distorted. So, to be safe, NASA has ordered a moratorium on all Martian commands beginning on October 2, 2021. After communication with Perseverance resumes on October 14, NASA hopes to continue its mission retrieving samples from the Red Planet. 
but in the meantime, the rocks collected from Juzero Crater have given the agency's brightest minds plenty to think about. If life-supporting conditions really did exist on Mars for a sustained period of time, for example, what organisms might have thrived on this alien planet? And what could they teach us about creating a habitable environment in space today? As mankind grows ever closer to setting foot on Mars, questions such as these are becoming more and more important every day. But even while experts at NASA use technology such as Perseverance to further explore the Martian environment, private companies are starting to turn their gaze to the same goal. Ultimately, the race to land a person on Mars is yet to be won, and the eventual victor might surprise us. Until then, we'll have to get our fill of Mars through Perseverance, whose images of the red planet that were beamed back to Earth are nothing short of breathtaking. This photo shows the Ingenuity helicopter, which was transported to Mars inside the Perseverance rover. Once Perseverance had safely landed, it was time to let Ingenuity fly. Here it is in the process of being dropped. Exciting. Perseverance's Mastcom Z camera also caught the first flight of the Ingenuity helicopter. And this was a history maker. That short spin through the Mars atmosphere was the first time a controlled aircraft had flown on Mars or any celestial body other than Earth. We bet the folks at NASA were overjoyed. See that plate at the bottom right? It's pretty special. According to NASA, it has three computer chips in it, with the names of 11 million humans stored on them. They all applied to be part of the agency's Send Your Name to Mars initiative, which invited people to register to travel to the red planet well, sort of. The Ingenuity helicopter is also equipped with a color camera, and that enabled it to capture an eye-catching shot of Mars from above. The photo was taken from a height of 17 feet as Ingenuity flew away from the rover. And yet again, this moment made history. NASA has said of the photo, this is the first color image of the Martian surface taken by an aerial vehicle, while it was aloft. One of Perseverance's many pieces of kit is a drill. This can burrow down into the surface of Mars and extract cores of rock stored in tubes. And one day, NASA hopes, a future mission will not only travel to Mars, but it will also fly back to Earth. When that happens, the spacecraft will deliver the cores to scientists on our planet for thorough analysis. Perhaps then they may find evidence of ancient microbial life. The crowning glory of NASA's entire Perseverance mission was the moment of landing. If that went wrong, bang went the whole project and years of work. But on February 18, 2021, things went just about as smoothly as in this artist's illustration. The Perseverance rover was on Mars' surface, and she was entirely intact ready to start scientific research and exploration. This is part of the painstaking checking and testing that Perseverance had to go through in readiness for her flight to Mars. The engineer is using a so-called solar intensity probe to calculate how much sunlight will hit various parts of the rover. And this information allowed the scientific team to assess how light would impact the vehicle when it was on Mars. Once Perseverance had landed in the Juzero crater, NASA folks decided to name the touchdown spot. A tiny yellow star gives the precise location where the rover settled onto the Martian surface, and this will now forever be known as the Octavia E. Butler landing. It's a fitting memorial for the sci-fi legend, don't you think? The scientific instrument Watson naturally has a partner called Sherlock. That's nerdy humor for you. Watson is a camera capable of taking detailed close-up shots of Martian rocks. Sherlock, on the other hand, collects tiny pieces of this rock for chemical analysis. And working together, the two are looking for evidence of organic molecules. This includes the specific minerals that are the basis for life on Earth. This shot shows Perseverance making its first cautious drive on the surface of Mars. Taking things easy, the rover covered a distance of just over 21 feet without mishap. And a NASA press release quoted engineer Anais Zarifian, who said, this was our first chance to kick the tires and take Perseverance out for a spin. The rover's six-wheel drive responded superbly. Good to know. No wonder these NASA staffers are jubilant. They've just seen their baby the Perseverance rover land safely on the red planet. It's the culmination of years of painstaking work, and everything went to plan. It took seven months for the spacecraft to travel to Mars from Earth. 
After that, Perseverance spent just seven minutes descending through the planet's atmosphere before touching down in the Jezero crater. Here's the Perseverance mission launching from Cape Canaveral on July 30, 2020. And the whole thing wouldn't have been possible without a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket. One of these devices first propelled a NASA mission to the Red Planet when it successfully flew the 2005 Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter there. Overall, Perseverance was the fifth trip to Mars powered by an Atlas V. White-suited engineers and scientists are working in a so-called clean room at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. It's December 2019, and they're giving Perseverance its very first driving test. The NASA staffers have rigged up a crude but effective route to check the rover's systems and mobility. We hope it passed with flying colors. NASA has dubbed this diagram the family portrait. And the parade starts from the left with the very first rover to get to Mars. Sojourner was part of the Pathfinder mission that launched back in 1996, and it landed successfully on the Red Planet the following year. You may be tempted to call Ingenuity a drone, but NASA prefers to call it a helicopter. In any case, it's a groundbreaking piece of kit the first to have the capability of remotely controlled flight on another planet. The four-pound device was secreted in the innards of Perseverance, and it was released a few days after the landing. This diagram gives a comprehensive guide to Perseverance's many scientific instruments. And the impressive array of gadgets includes the Mastcom Z, a camera that can take both stereoscopic and panoramic photos. There's also the SuperCam, which is an instrument capable of chemical analysis and image making. It can even remotely detect signs of possible ancient organic remains on the planet's surface. But, sadly, it hasn't yet spotted aliens. It's this parachute that decreased Perseverance's speed as it plummeted towards the surface of Mars. We're seeing it from a camera mounted on the spacecraft's back shell. But the parachute hides a secret. The red and white patches pattern is arranged in code, and when decrypted the message apparently reads dare mighty things. Perseverance's first journey wasn't actually to Mars. It was aboard a Boeing C-17 transport plane from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. After construction in Pasadena, the spacecraft landed at Kennedy in February 2020 for final tests and preparation before its July launch. Here, we see NASA personnel giving the vehicle an initial once-over. This is an artist's illustration of Perseverance on Mars. And as you can see, the vehicle is positively bursting with scientific equipment. The rover's main mission is to hunt for signs of ancient organisms preserved in the red planet's rocks. It will also take a raft of measurements with an eye to possible human missions to Mars. And this detailed artist's illustration of Perseverance gives an excellent idea of the vehicle's complexity. Much of the scientific kit fitted onto the rover is there to accomplish the mission's main objective. The hunt for signs of ancient life on the red planet. The method used for this search basically boils down to analyzing Martian soil and rocks. This illustration shows the rim of the Jezero crater, where Perseverance landed in February 2021. The crater is a whopping 28 miles across, and it lies on the western limits of an area called Isidus Planitia, not far from Mars' equator. NASA picked this spot because it's more likely to host the remains of ancient microbial life. Perseverance's Mastcom Z camera captured this shot of ingenuity, now freed from its traveling position inside the rover. And you can clearly see the helicopter's carbon fiber rotors. At their full extent they span nearly 4 feet, and at top speed they turn at just over 40 revolutions per second. That's pretty fast. Here's a view looking down into Gale Crater, but it's not one taken from Perseverance. You see, NASA actually has another rover in operation on the Red Planet. It's called Curiosity, and this photo was captured on Martian Day 3090 of Curiosity's mission on the planet. The rover touched down on Mars in August 2012 in the Gale Crater. This image of Ingenuity on its fourth flight was captured by one of Perseverance's six Hascoms. Yes, the helicopter is there, but in this pic it's just a speck against the background of mountains. As their name suggests, Hascoms help the rover avoid obstacles such as boulders and ditches. They also play a role in documenting key moments in the mission like this Ingenuity flight.
Curiosity's Mastcom took this picture of the rover's own tracks, left as it traversed the Martian soil through a feature called the Dingo Gap. The rover arrived nine years before Perseverance's landing, but it's still in operation and sending images back to Earth. And to give you an idea of Curiosity's size, those two tire tracks are about nine feet apart. NASA has been running a public boat to pick the photo of the week from Perseverance. And this shot was the winner in week four of the mission. One of the NAVCOM's the right camera, to be precise, captured the moment when Perseverance's robotic arm cast its shadow on the Mars surface. Here, the folks at NASA celebrate Ingenuity's initial flight. It became the first ever aircraft to fly on Mars, in fact, and that was no small achievement. You see, the atmosphere on Mars is much thinner than on Earth, just about 1% of our planets by volume. That means the scientists weren't even sure a helicopter would work in those conditions. This hill is called Santa Cruz, and it lies within the Juzero crater. You can just about see the crater's rim, too, in the distance. And Santa Cruz is actually around one and a half miles away from the rover in this shot. It was taken on the 68th Martian day of the Perseverance mission. This is a close-up of the solar panel ingenuity depends upon for its power. And without it, things could go very wrong. At a February 2021 news conference, NASA project manager Mimi Ong pointed out some of the difficulties Ingenuity faces. She said, this little four-pounder has to survive the cold frigid nights of Mars. To stay warm, it also has to garner energy from the sun through its solar panels to charge its battery. It has to fly, too, of course. The NASA Mars missions have attracted their fair share of conspiracy theories. One was even reported in a British newspaper. In 2020 the Daily Express suggested that Mars Curiosity Perseverance's predecessor rover had captured an image of ancient ruins on the Red Planet. We'll leave you to decide whether that seems likely or not. This image was taken in April 2021 by the Mars Curiosity rover still operating on the Red Planet when Perseverance arrived. And the hill you see in the photo? It's been dubbed Rafael Navarro Mountain. This honors the memory of astrobiologist Rafael Navarro Gonzalez, who worked on the Curiosity mission. Sadly, he passed away in January 2021. Perseverance took this shot of ingenuity with one of the three Hascoms attached to its rear. And you ought to know the secret behind the helicopter. In February 2021 mechanical engineer Josh Ravitch explained that Ingenuity was just a technology demonstration. Yes, the point of getting it to Mars was just to find out whether an aircraft could operate in the thin atmosphere. Looks like it can. The NASA missions to Mars are amazing enough in their own right, but that doesn't appear to be enough for some people. Not for Scott C. Waring, anyway. He's claimed to be able to see an ancient Bible in this shot taken by the Curiosity rover. This illustration gives a clear view of Perseverance's descent towards Mars' surface. As Perseverance entered the planet's atmosphere, it split from its crew's rocket. Then the rover was left attached to its descent stage, which NASA has called a kind of jetpack. The descent stage is equipped with rockets that ignite to slow down the spacecraft's speed. And at about 66 feet from the surface, this section lowered Perseverance down using special cables. The public chose this photo as one of the Perseverance mission's images of the week. And rightly so, as it's really cool. Perseverance's rear right has come captured ingenuity on Martian day 43 of the mission, wowing even a seasoned NASA scientist. Josh Ravitch, an engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory said at a news conference, to see ingenuity there, getting there finally, it's kind of surreal still. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.